this is Mary over here at Image on the Page and today I'm going to show you how I cover my um, paperback books. So whether they're like the mass market paperback or the taller versions, I have to, well, I have, I cover them the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I cover them to protect them, at least in my mind. I don't know if it actually does anything. So I hope this works and makes sense because um, this is kind of a weird setup. I just have two tray tables stacked on top of each other and my camera attached to that. So the first thing is the contact paper I actually use. This, I get them both from, really dusty, I get them both from Walmart. These actually come like this. It comes like this long. So it's almost like the size of my, length of my arm. Um, and I cut it in half so that it fits you can see so it fits the mass market paperback sizes. Always there's just, it's a lot of extra space that I gotta cut off. And this means I get double for the money. I think they're like four to seven bucks, I can't remember. These ones I also found at Walmart. Um, it's the same thing, contact paper, maybe slightly different brand. Um, this is the length it comes in. And I like this length more for anything bigger than mass market paperback because they have a nice width. Because always, as you can see, it gets if you use this one, it's, come here, there's like no, almost no to go around these parts. So, I'm going to do the mass market paperback first. So what you basically need is the books you're going to cover, scissors, and just your contact paper. So the first thing I do is I just roughly um, guess or like measure it. So what's really cool about the contact paper, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it's really hard to see. Is there's like lines, it's like a grid. So you can kind of get a straight line. So what I like to do is I give about two square lengths of extra space on each side. Um, just so that it's kind of a nice amount to go because you're going to take it off and it's going to wrap around the edge of the cover. So you want some extra so it can actually have room to grip. So then you just try to find the next two so if it comes to and then you just cut a straight line to the best of your abilities. Mine is never straight so and that gets set aside. The next thing you do, or at least this is how I do it, um, instead of ripping it all off and trying to place the book because I, I just get it all crooked what I do is I try to lift a cup, a corner, separate a corner a little bit, maybe, there we go, like this, and I fold it back just like, since I gave it an extra two square lengths, I fold it back like three square lengths, um, and then so like if this is the edge of my um, contact paper, I put the book facing away. So it's kind of what it looks like. And here, let me see if I can. So here is the edge of the contact paper. And then so once you pull it off, it follows the length of the book. See, and then it's fairly straight. You don't have to worry too much about whether or not it's super crooked on the edges. And then I just bring it around and I press it down um, so all the bubbles get out. Do that on both sides. Sometimes these are hard because a lot of publishers like to use raised lettering, which creates a lot of tiny air pockets. You use your fingers. Sometimes I use the edge of my scissors to get them up. Um, right now I'm just going to use my fingers. What's really nice about this contact paper is once if you it's really easy to lift up. Like it doesn't it sticks to the book but not like tape might. It won't like rip the cover if you lift it up because it's not that sticky. So then you can always lift it up if there's air bubbles over there or it's not quite if it's folding over on itself. So this is kind of what it looks like without any of the edges cut. And then what I do, um is I cut squares into each of the corners of the contact paper. 
just kind of in line with the line of the cover. And you can use smaller scissors if you want. These are just the scissors I had on hand. Manicure scissors are pretty good. Um, so then you can kind of see, let's see if you can, yeah, there we go. Okay. So you can kind of see the edges of that. And then I do the same, oh. I do the same on the back side. Obviously I gave this one a little bit too much extra because this side is way longer than the other. It's okay, it happens. And once your corners are cut, you want to uh, make sure to cut the um, parts around the spine because it, you won't be able to fold it like these. You're going to fold over and they'll just stick. You're not going to be able to do that for the spine because obviously it's attached to the pages. So what I do is I just cut, I don't know, like maybe a quarter inch um, away from the spine. Um, just in case there's extra glue and it sticks and stuff like that. And then to get the closest cut possible, what I do is when your book is face up, you do the bottom spine. And when it's, um, when it's downside, you do the top. So since it's face up, this allows the scissors to lay right along the edge of the book. Um, so you don't have any extra paper or extra, um, like over, like slappy contact paper. You can kind of see it. See, there's a clean edge. Okay, not really a clean edge. Give me a second. Okay, so there's a clean edge. No extra contact paper or anything like that. Just it along the edge of the book. And then when it's face down, I do the same to the top half of the spine. And voila, now all your edges are cut and it's the really easy part. So like I have the top cut, the bottom cut, the corners cut, and you just open it. I try not to break the spine because I don't see the point doing that if I'm not gonna, just to cover it. And I lay the um, top and bottom flaps down first. That's just my preference. I don't know if there's any real difference. And then I do the side edge, the long edge. You want to make sure not to pull too, too hard because if you do, you could end up making it so the um, cover's a little bent because you're trying to force it. So just cover it, just pull it to the edge, and then usually if you press like this and then just go side to side, it works out really well. There's usually not too much of a bubble there at the corner. And now I have a cover, covered book. I also feel like it helps if it, you're, um, well I do this after I read it, so that doesn't help, but like if you reread them and you travel with them, definitely protects it. Um, I don't know if it does anything for the color of it or anything like that, but it just makes me feel better. So that was book one. And now I'll do one of the bigger books. Um, the process isn't any different. Um, I just use this contact paper instead, which has um, which has dots instead of the grids, um, and it's it's honestly the same way. So the way I do it is I just take some and then I fold it over, and then I pull it to where I need it. This one's being difficult because I'm almost at the end. Measure it to the best of your ability. Once again, you just 
try to lift up any corner you can. So I got that corner this time. This one is. I hate getting to the end because it makes it so it's extra curly. So it makes it a bit more difficult. It doesn't like to listen. So once again, since I want two, um, at least to fold over, I measure down three to give it like one space for the book to hold on to. That one I'm pretty sure is also. Now when they're curling like this, you have to be a bit more careful because um, it's going to want to recurl on itself, which means if it's sticky, it'll stick to itself, which really sucks. Because um, this is not as bad as du duct tape trying to get it to unstick from itself, but it's kind of like saran wrap. It just doesn't usually go well. And then because of the edges, I always bring it to the edge and try to press up so I get as close as a stick as possible. So once again, here we have it without the edges cut. And now to do the same thing we did. I usually do this when I'm watching TV or something just because cause it can be a little, like once you know how you're doing it, it can be a little tedious. Um, so it's nice to kind of have something on in the background. And then once again, I'm going to do the spine. So for this spine, because I already cut, as you can kind of see, they're separating. So I already cut the edges, and since I'm on the back, where like the synopsis and stuff is, I'm going to do the top half of the spine. I know it seems counterintuitive, but somehow that's the way it works because the, um, outside part of the scissor can lay right flat so you can get the sharpest cut possible or the closest cut. Now they stuck together. And then it doesn't really matter what side you do first because they both get the same treatment. Like I said, I like to have it on its side just because you're not breaking the spine or anything like that. And then I do this part first. And then voila! It is done! So that is how I cover my books for Peace of mind, I guess, for protection. Um, I, like I said, I don't do hardcover books just because I'd only be doing the um, dust jackets and that would be very difficult because these at least have some weight to them to hold the sticky paper down. The other ones, the dust jackets, don't. Um, well, until the next video, ta-ta for now!